Hey, it is Friday and we're here with another art video. And today I'm gonna to be doing an eye drawing in watercolor, colored pencil, and ink, as well as, of course, I just drew this eye in graphite. And the type of paper that I'm gonna be using today is Canson Watercolor Artboard. Here is the artboard if you're interested in checking it out. It is my favorite to use when dealing with wet mediums as well as when I'm dealing with a lot of different different mediums. So I am not primarily a watercolor artist, but I love to play around with watercolor. So I thought today we could delve in and try to do an eye in watercolor. So to get started, I have a watercolor palette here. I have some brushes, my lovely, lovely treckle brush, one of my favorites. I definitely would highly recommend them. And here is my little dish with my colors in it, as well as I have a small group of Karen Dash pencils. And we're going to play with each of these as we add some elements to this eye drawing. So when I first start out with a water medium, you can start out by painting on dry, on a dry board or dry paper, or you can start on a wet. And the difference between the two is if I was to start on this dry paper, I would be able to control the watercolor pretty much wherever the brush went. But if I wet the paper before I go ahead and apply the watercolor, the watercolor will continually blend and move into the, all the places that the image is wet. So let's get started. And I am going to just go ahead and put a little bit of water around the edge here. Because we're gonna build up a little bit of a skin tone. And because my brush was already used earlier today to make some, there's a little purple hue left because I didn't completely wash out the brush, but I'm pretty happy with that because purple and kind of a pink is what we're gonna start building up. So I went ahead and grabbed a little bit more pink here and I have a paper towel here. If I get a little bit too much water on my brush, I can do that. As well as I also have a piece of paper here if I want to test out what it's gonna look like. So for example, oh, that might be a little too dark. So I'll know that I'll need to add more water to make it lighter. So I have a paper and a paper towel here to help guide me. So I mixed a little bit of an orange in there to give it a little bit less of a pinky pinky purpley bluish feel. So it has a bit more of a, a warm feel to it. And one of the things I love to do is use a hair dryer because I am impatient. And so years ago when I would use acrylics, I would always use a hair dryer to dry things quicker. And the same with this. So we're going to stop for a second and I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer. Okay. So now that this has been dried with a hair dryer, we are back on dry on dry surface. So as you can see, this is not really bleeding into the rest of it because there's not a ton of water. And so you have a lot more control this way.
And with this, I'm just trying to move a little bit of this color from the corner, as you could see. It's having a nice blending effect because I'm dragging the water this way. Remember, it would, if the rest of the paper was wet, it wouldn't stay like this. It would definitely bleed into the other parts of the paper. Now I like the way that looks, so this I'm going to let air dry. So there's different ways that you can do it. You can keep working it, you can blow dry it, or you can let it air dry and see how that looks. When you let things air dry, for example, you get little splotches like this, which is a lot of fun and different textures than when you go ahead and, and blow dry it. And if you decide you're gonna blow dry it, also be careful to not blow dry too hard because you'll start spreading it across the paper. And yes, it might be fun and you might want it to look like that, but if you want the watercolor to stay where it is, then you'd want to be careful. So let's let this air dry and I'll see you back here in a minute. Now with it mostly dry, I want to go ahead and work on the iris. I'm going to go ahead and make the pupil black and I'm going to move the pupil up a little bit because it wasn't exactly centered. Erase the rest of that away. And I think we are going to make a blue-ish green iris. So let's get started on that. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little color Make sure I'm adding a little bit more blue to it. And we're going to let that dry for a minute and we'll be back. And so with this mostly dry, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to the bottom here. And we are gonna let this dry. Okay, it's dry. And I really love this little texture that came into it from letting it dry. Sometimes I love it and sometimes I don't. It's a lot of fun to kind of see where it goes. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna use a white Prisma color, Premier, and I'm gonna block out the white of the eye with it. And as you can see, as I'm putting it down, 
it's actually grayer than the paper itself, which is nice. So an eye itself is not stark white like this, but this will prevent watercolor from coming into this area and spreading. And we're going to use colored pencil for that part of the eye anyway. And so I'm going to take the gray next and I'm going to put a bit of gray under the eyelid where there would be a shadow. Going to use this wonderful sharpener, highly recommended to sharpen a lighter gray to blend that. just dusting that off and we can build this up a little bit more in a little bit okay so now I'm a big fan of really cool makeup and eyeliner so I'm gonna go ahead and line the top lid of an eye when you are doing art it is really suggested that you don't use hard lines for most things. We're gonna work on that right here because under this lid, it looks like a harsh line and we don't want that. That's not the best way. Not that you can't use harsh lines because you can use harsh lines in anything you wish. But when dealing with the face or the human body, Realistically speaking, there's no lines. Everything has soft edges. Okay. So I'm going to come in here and I want to soften this watercolor area a bit. All right, I'm going to let that dry. Okay, so now I would like to work in this area and add a little pink there. Let's see if I can make it a little bit more of a warm tone. And then I want to take some of that warm tone and put it up here. Now remember, this is all just my own feelings and what I want to do. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Now what I'm doing here is I don't want it to just look like an eye in the center of the paper. So I am going to 
have it fan out a bit into whoops, the other parts of the paper. So it has a more gradation feel to it. And then we can build it up from there. Okay, let's let that dry. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna darken the top part of this iris with colored pencil because there's gonna be a heavy shadow over top of that. And I am going to work on a really cool winged eyeliner shape. Because I can't seem to get away from the winged eyeliner. If anybody knows my art, they will know this is a truth. Okay. And so... The next thing I want to do is work on adding back a bit of a lid here. And sometimes when things go in a little too far, you can sometimes take a Q-tip and move it a little back. All right, let's let this dry. Okay, I loved the way that texture turned out. So I'm gonna use colored pencil here to make a more harsh line the way I want it. As well as perhaps adding a little bit of purple and then a little bit of pink. here with the white and I love how white goes over top of watercolor it's a lot of fun and then I'm gonna come in and we're gonna work heavy on 
the shadow again. But this time it comes a little farther down. Some fun highlights there.
and I really do love this purple color, so I want to add it into a few places. And let's let that dry. The fun thing with, with watercolor is being able to just play around with it. Okay, we are going to let that dry. Okay. And now I want to come back in here and darken this a bit more. And since we did this in this gel pen, I've decided that I'm not a big fan of the highlight. And so remember when we were doing it, there was an open spot where I didn't put any colored pencil and then I put the gel pen. So So I want to do a different shape. And the reason why is because this is such an interesting looking piece that I felt that if the highlight was just like that, it seemed a little boring. So remember, you can always change things the way that you want them. Or if you can't, you can always start over. You know, this was an experiment from the very beginning and it's turning out interesting to say the least, but that's one of the things I love about doing art is you don't have to, you don't have to be perfect that you can play around and see 
what you like and what you don't like. fun little pattern to add to the mix. And now I'm going to take a little bit of a yellowed colored pencil to brighten up that yellow there. And add a little yellow over here to kind of bring that color in. And add a little yellow over there. And I think I'll add a little bit right here, which was nice. Add a little bit in there. And then with the blue, I'm just going to add a little bit of turquoise. Remember, I want to keep that the way it was looking with the weird and interesting um, pattern. Go ahead and Okay. Add a little green there. And I think add a little green here. And I think I'm gonna take a little bit more of this color.
and then we will let that dry. So this is the final piece and I really appreciate you guys following me along for this video. I don't have a lot of experience in watercolor, so this is really an experimental and fun piece. I really would suggest if you're an artist that you should step outside your box and try different mediums. I have a video about that as well and I will link that in the notes of the YouTube channel so that you can check that out where I talk about expanding your brain and how that can really help you be a creative person. I do these videos every Friday. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or you can also toggle the bell and that will notify you when I have new videos out so you do not miss them. If you have any suggestions of videos you would like me to do, please feel free to send me a message or leave me a comment as well as you can find tutorials, step-by-steps, how-to videos, and other articles on my website at anyacon.com under the resources section. And there's also a section where I have all my art materials. So if you're wondering what kind of watercolors or what kind of colored pencils or paper I'm using, it is all under there. All right, I will see you guys next Friday. Have a wonderful week.